What's up, folks? Welcome to day 91 of Fusion. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to make a barrel cam today. Now, that Geneva gear that I made, Geneva, that Geneva gear that I made, uh, I thought was too cool, and we got it to work. I wanted to see what else we could make, and a barrel cam kind of came across my, my radar. And so what it does is it takes a rotational motion and converts it into a linear motion, but depending upon the relationship between the gap here and the thickness of the follower rod can determine what kind of relationship you have with the slide. And so you see right now is that there's a little bit extra of a gap between the, uh, the follow rod and the barrel cam. And so what happens is, is that there's a slight pause at the top, slides down, slight pause at the bottom, you could do a whole deep dive on that relationship there. But we're just going to build this. And then if you want to 3D print it or do whatever else you can, uh, you're welcome to. But follow along with me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch. And it's going to be just a one inch diameter rod. So let's just create a cylinder. Let's just make it three inches actually. I do that and there's a reason we're going to do this. Let's do a symmetric extrusion but instead of uh, going one direction let's do symmetric because what we're going to do is we're going to take this rod and we're going to do a cut out of it with a plane out of an angle. So I'm going to construct plane at an angle and let's do a 45 degree turn. Let's do it the other way and click OK. Now what this will allow me to do is to do something I never really thought I would ever make something to use this tool. It's called split body. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the body we want to split right here. And what are we going to cut with? And that's going to be that plane at an angle that we just did. And so what that does for us is it creates this, uh, this perfect 45 degree slice right in the middle of our rod. Let's go ahead and take our bodies here and well, actually let's move this, this one right here. Let's go up half an inch. Let's remember that for later. We went, we moved it up half an inch and now we need to connect these two bodies together. So I'm going to do the one create a sketch. Let's go to this top plane right here. Let's go with an inside diameter of that seems just a little bit too short. Let's do 0.375. That looks a little bit better. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to run it all the way through. We're going to do a join command. I'm going to stick this out a little bit at the bottom, and we're going to see why. Is because I'm going to attach that disc to it, um, but I want that disc to be a little bit different. That way, if I were to 3D print these things, it actually works. Okay, so we did a join. We should have, once you hit OK here, we should have all one body and everything looks good. We got one body over here. So I'm going to create components from body. And we're going to call this our barrel can. Looks good so far. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch. Actually, I might be able to do it without even this create a sketch. Let's just try to extrude this bottom profile right here and create a new component. I'm going to go a little bit. Let's go flush. Let's just go flush with it. Why not? Click OK. And that's just going to be the disk for our barrel cam to sit on. Sweet. Everything is looking good. I'm going to make that construction plane disappear because we don't need it anymore. And I'm going to pop up my origin planes again. So we're going to click on sketch. We're going to click on this uh, this top plane right here. And what I'm going to do is create a slide for, there's rectangle, center point rectangle, a slide for my follower rod to slide along. 
let's create a, a square. So let's do uh, um, let's do quarter inch by quarter inch. And we're gonna bring that up. Let's do a symmetrical extrusion again. That way they match nice and pretty. Zero point, or sorry, oh, that'd be one point five there. And create a new component. We're gonna double click here. And let's name our component our slide. And there we go. Where everything's already lined up. All I need to do is create my follower arm, and we're kind of done here. So I'm going to actually go back to the sketch that we did earlier, and I'm going to draw another rectangle around it. So do rectangle, center point rectangle. Oh, that is such a wonderful rectangle to use. Highly recommend it. And let's do just something a little bit bigger. Now it's like, oh, it disappeared. Well, not really. It's just not active anymore since we already consumed that sketch. Let's just create a shaft to go around our slide. Create a new component. And we'll just call this the follower. Okay. Everything is looking good. We can make that sketch inactive since we don't need it anymore. We can go ahead and make our origin planes inactive since we don't need any more. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put a follower rod on this profile right here. But the barrel cam's in my way. I don't like it. We'll make that inactive. I'm going to zoom in quite a bit. And this is where we think about what did we make our gap in our barrel cam to be? We made it half an inch. So this follower rod here needs to be somewhere between zero and half an inch. I'm going to do a quarter inch. That way we get that gap motion where it stops at the top. We can go ahead and make sure this is just dimension and center. That looks okay. Just to make sure. Center this. Whoop. Okay. Looks good. We're going to zoom out, make our barrel cam active again, and just extrude this arm out until it gets pretty close to the center shaft. We don't want it to be, oh, look at that. There's actually a gap there. That's wonderful. We don't want it to be touching because we're going to do contact sets here, and my computer likes to cry when I do contact sets. So instead, we're just going to have it be really close to the center shaft. And it's going to interact like so. Just to make things pretty, we can go ahead and fill it, not fillet, but fill it at the top of that, that barrel cam. Oh, a little too far. There we go. And all we got to do is throw in our motion constraints and we're done. So what two pieces aren't going to move here? And that's going to be the disc down at the bottom. So we're going to right click and ground that. And the slide ground both of those. That way the barrel came in the follower rod can move, but those other pieces do not. Joint. What are we going to join? Well, we're going to join the bottom of our barrel cam to let me zoom in here. Oh, trying to look like the right one. Bottom of our barrel cam to there we go. I knew it was going to do that. It made me frustrated. Yeah. I had to flip my axes anyways. All right. I tried to get it where it didn't, but here we go. Click OK. Now, this should rotate pretty freely. Boom. Looks great. Next thing is going to be is that this follower is going to slide along. Right here. So let's do, I'm going to do the front face, make sure we don't accidentally go to the back or inside. I'm going to do the front face of that slide, and it's going to do with the front face right here. Okay. Now, by default, it's going to have that revolute and not a slider, but it's not going to be the Z axis. So it's going to be, it's not going to be the X axis. It's going to be the Y axis. There we go. 
Click OK. And there we go. Now I hold up. Wait a minute. I gotta pull this up a little bit. There we go. We can pull it up to where it needs to be and capture that position. And if it works, fingers crossed that my computer doesn't cry, we're gonna enable all contact sets. That means none of these parts can go through each other anymore. And I'm gonna hit right click and animate bottom. It looks like my computer is trying to cry a little bit. Well, why is that? That's because my follower rod is too thick. Uh, there is a little bit of interference between the bottom of, and I guess the top of that motion to where the follower is interacting with the cam. So how are we gonna fix that? Well, let's go back down here in our timeline and let's find when When we create a follower cam, what do we make? We use 0.25. Let's do something more like 0.375. Oh no, that's higher. We'll go lower. Well, 0.125. Let's go, let's go with eighth of an inch. Hit finish sketch. Now let's try this out. Animate model. There we go, and we are fixed. Okay, there we go, folks. We made a barrel cam. Is my computer still crying? I clapped and it started to freeze up on me again. And anyways, we made a barrel cam. We turned rotational motion into a linear motion that doesn't have a linear relationship. Um, this is super fun. I'm looking forward to the last nine videos. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to throw them down in the comment section. I'd love to help you out. Uh, we're going to stick around, finish out this series, make some cool interactions, uh, and then hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to 3D print all these and kind of mount them to the to the classroom. So uh, if you want some of these, you can make them for yourself on mount them as well. You're going to notice that some of these might need some slight adjustments, so that way you can do that. So none of the Geneva cams that we made, or Geneva gear we made earlier, or some of those other things, can be 3D printed as is. You might have to make some slight modifications. But in any case, you guys are awesome. Stay awesome. I will see you in the next video.